Hi, and welcome back. So for today's video, um, I think that we're going to, I guess, take a little deep dive. I guess it's not going to be very deep, but a little look into uh, friction coefficients. Um, so I'll, I'll start off by telling you a story. So a few days ago, I was like driving my car around, you know, and you get somebody who's uh, who's at a stoplight with you and uh, I'll draw it. This is obviously their car. Um, and, you know, there's a little dude in the in the driver's seat and they just like come over here out of the stoplight and speed up super fast. Right. And I was sitting there, you know, in my in my slow car and I was like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder how fast could you possibly um, like speed up a car? Right. So obviously, you know, you've got you've got wind blowing over the car. Um, but for for this video, we're going to ignore all of that stuff. Um, we're only going to for focus on the uh, the friction force between the the tires and the uh, yes main cab area of the car. So this is, I guess this also ignores uh, like rolling resistance, um, which would slow you down. Although I don't know if it actually would affect your, your top speed. So the goal, the goal for today is to calculate how long it would take you to go from, let's say zero miles per hour to 60 miles per hour um, in, in a car. So let's start off, I guess we'll start off with some, uh, some simple equations. So the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So force being, I guess, the, the force of the tires and mass being the mass of the car and acceleration being, well, this is, this is what we're going to calculate um, because we need acceleration in order to figure out this, I guess, time. Um, because if you recall the acceleration, right, it is, let's say, miles per hour per hour. And uh, and we can calculate, so miles per hour, you'll notice that that's just velocity. So this is the, the change in velocity per hour, right? And we can, uh, we can take this, so velocity being miles per hour. Um, we just uh, do one over the velocity and uh, let's see, miles per hour. And uh, this miles cancels with that miles. And this leaves us with, uh, I guess, the inverse of what we're looking for. So this would be one over the hours. So we would, uh, we would want to do instead the velocity over the acceleration. And this would give us um, hours. And this, this would be hours to go from zero or to do this delta V, um, but obviously our, our delta V um, is just equal to the V final um, because we have our, our initial V is equal to zero. I think that's right, minus initial V, right? But this here, that is zero, so that doesn't matter. So this delta V ends up just being V um, and this will give you the time it takes for me to go for you to go from zero miles per hour to uh, to whatever this V is um, at this particular acceleration. So we'll wind our way back over here. Um, I'm going to just draw a box here so that we don't get ourselves uh, super confused. I'll scroll down a little bit. So I'm going to come back to this force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And force in this case, um, we're looking at force is equal to the force of friction, right? Because that's the only force we're considering. And the, the force of friction is going to be equal to the, I guess, force normal of our, of our car onto the ground here. So force pushing down, force normal, um, times the friction coefficient. And our force normal here is just the mass of our car uh, times gravity. 
and the friction coefficient. I, uh, I shall go look it up for the friction coefficient between rubber and, uh, and asphalt. So after uh, taking a little break there and looking up the friction coefficient, I determined that the friction coefficient um, between rubber and asphalt is approximately 0.9. And this is uh, a number that doesn't have any units. So now that we have this, we can uh, rewrite our equation. So we've got mass times gravity times the friction coefficient is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And you notice that mass cancels out here. And uh, this is, I guess, interesting because it means that the mass of your car doesn't matter. Although that's not true um, because this would only uh, I guess this would only be true if your car was in four wheel drive, because if you had a car and it was uh, just rear wheel drive, then the mass of the, I guess, the mass of your car um, on the, I guess, part of the wheel that's doing the work would be, you know, half or, or some fraction of the total mass of your car, because, you know, your car is evenly distributed weight wise. I mean, probably about evenly, um, I guess more towards your, your motor um, or your engine. You know, if your engine's here, you're probably gonna have more weight here. You know, maybe if you got a pickup truck, you got something heavy on the back, then uh, you end up with a lot more weight on the back. But for, for our analysis here, we will assume that it is an all-wheel drive vehicle. And that allows us just to ignore um, all of this, uh, I guess, more specific to each car um, physics. Um, although I, I would say that if you, if you have a car that is, you know, rear wheel drive only, um, or in like rear, rear or front wheel drive mode, um, where only half of your wheels are driven, your time or your acceleration probably ends up halved, so your time probably ends up about double. Um, but that de depends on how uh, how your your mass is distributed um, between your your wheels, um, but we'll we'll ignore that. So now we end up with gravity times the force friction coefficient is equal to the acceleration. And then uh, we can, let's see, we can come over here and grab our uh, equation here and uh, plug this into that. And we end up with our time. So the velocity, let's see, velocity we want to get to 60 miles per hour over um, this G times F C E. And this should give us the time it takes from zero to 60 in hours. So let us see, let us see. So gravity, um, obviously 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, the frictional coefficient 0.9. So we, and then uh, we got 60 up above, but I'm going to uh, convert this, or actually maybe it's easier to convert this bottom half to uh, miles per hour. Actually, I'm going to, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll convert this top half to miles per second. Um, and we'll convert the bottom half to miles per second squared. I think that is that is the, uh, the plan. So let me give us a little bit more space here. So 60 miles per hour. And converted to, I guess, convert hours to minutes. So hours minutes, right, one hour, 60 minutes, and then convert minutes to seconds. So one minute, 
is 60 seconds. And then we got all of this over 9.8 meters per second squared. And uh, we'll take 9.8. Let me grab my calculator here. 9.8 meters to miles. And it says 0 0.006089 miles. So we'll actually just uh, convert that right at the beginning here. Come over here and get my eraser. And let me bring back my calculator. We'll put it over here and get my pencil back. And we've got 0 0.006089 miles per second squared times 0.9. And I believe if we if we have done this correctly, uh, our hours cancel, minutes cancel here. Um, second on the bottom cancels with the second on the top. And our miles on the top cancel with the miles on the bottom. The second on the bottom gets flipped up to the top, which should give us an answer in seconds. And then uh, we just have to do the, uh, the calculation. So we've got 60 divided by 60. Um, I guess 60 times 60, because we got it twice. And then the quantity of that whole thing, so that's all the top bits, divided by the answer. And this is actually answer times 0.9. And I think that should spit out We end up with, uh, let's see, 3.041 seconds being the, I guess, theoretical maximum that uh, you could achieve if you were if you were in a car and uh, you're going zero to 60 um, because so this is the theoretical maximum, because if you went any faster, your uh, your tires would overcome the force of friction and they would actually start skidding um, at which point i think you you just end up with the the force of friction um, and it doesn't matter how fast your tires are going so that is uh, i think that is the end of this uh, this video let me know if i made any mistakes but i'm pretty sure that this answer seems reasonable to me. Um, and, you know, maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit slower in real life. I'm sure that they've got special grippy tires that are, that are you know, extra frictiony. Um, so maybe you could end up with like a, a 0.1, 0 0.1, uh, 0.2 frictional coefficient, and that would pull this number down um, pretty, pretty drastically. But three seconds seems about right. Um, it's not overly long and it's not overly short. So I hope this was a, an interesting video um, and I hope you, you learned something. So uh, have a nice day.